Hello and welcome to this video that looks at Yorkshire VLE's item test analysis tool. Um, we have on screen now a typical output um, from the item test analysis. We have at the top a test summary, followed by overall counts of discrimination and difficulty, and then lower down for individual questions we have measures, individual measures of discrimination and difficulty. What this video is going to do is have a look at how these numbers are calculated and what they mean with regards to your test. So here we have um, some people that have done a fictional test and their scores out of 10. Um, if we look a little bit deeper, we find that the questions are true and false. And uh, here indicated uh, green is a correct answer and red is a incorrect answer. At the bottom, I've added up the number of correct answers. So for the purposes of an item test analysis, the ordering of the questions doesn't matter. Um, they might well for pedagogic reasons when you design the test, but for this, uh, we can order them any way we like. And it makes sense to actually order them initially um, based on how many correct uh, answers, how many correct responses. So I've done that here, and we have question one, which was answered uh, correctly by everybody, uh, all the way down to question three, which was only answered right once. The first type of analysis uh, Vivili uh, gives you is an item difficulty analysis. Um, this is just a measure of how many people got the question correct. So we turn the correct answers into percentages and then we arbitrarily decide that 80% or higher is an easy question, 30% uh, or less is a hard question, and in the middle is medium. And this is Blackboard's designation, but it does give you an idea about the difficulty of each item on your test. Um, and so the summary at the top is just based on counting up how many easy questions, how many medium questions, and how many hard questions. Discrimination looks at a different feature of the questions. It looks in a sense at how characteristic the responses are relative to the difficulty of the question. So let's first of all look at question two. Um, question two was answered incorrectly by those four students who did worse on the test and it was answered correctly by those that did well. We say that uh, the discrimination of question two is high. It's very good at discriminating between people who did badly and people who did well on the test. The actual measure of discrimination for this question is 0.81. Uh, discrimination is always a number that lies between minus one and positive one. Um, this is 0.81 is close to positive one. So it, we say it has high discrimination. Um, if we look at questions four and five, these are a little more typical to what you might see in, in a, a real test rather than a fictional one. So on the whole, people scored, well, in the first case, six out of 10, four out of 10 on these questions. Um, in general, the people that did worse on the test did worse on this question uh, and vice versa. However, there are a few discrepancies. Um, correspondingly, the item discriminations here are still positive. Um, it, it is true that the red dots are nearer the top, uh, which correspond to people who did worse in the test. Um, but overall, it, it, it is slightly less good at discriminating compared to question two. Finally, we have question six, um, which is a bit of an anomaly. Um, we have three students um, who scored, uh, who, who got, who answered correctly, uh, but overall in their test results, they didn't answer many questions correctly. So question six is a, is a, is a bad question when it comes to discriminating between people who did well and badly on the test. When we work out its discrimination, um, we end up with a negative number actually, and it's very close to zero. Um, and we know that this is, in a sense, a worse question. For the purposes of this test, where we've asked some students some questions and we've recorded their marks out of 10, this question isn't very good at indicating, at predicting the total score. And then we have question three, where the only person that answered it correctly was the person that scored 100%. Now, this discrimination you might expect to be as high as question two um the problem we have with this question is that maybe it was kind of more too difficult um for the cohort as a whole and so it's not really great at uh, discriminating um how good people were on the test it's just did they get them all right or not um and so this discrimination measure um, is, is somewhere like question four and question five Finally, we have question one, um, which also is not very good at predicting uh, the total score because everybody got it right. 
In fact, the way that discrimination is calculated uh, means that, that this actually gives no answer. Uh, the item is is just too easy. Um, in a way, it might be a leading item. Um, so overall, uh, we're looking for items that are kind of bigger than 0.1. Uh, they, they, Blackboard describes these as fair and uh, bigger than 0.3 is good. Again, these are fairly arbitrary numbers, but it's a way of comparing the different items in your test to see which ones are, are useful um, at uh, predicting or discriminating um, the, the students that did better on the test and students that did worse on the test. So overall, when we look at this analysis, uh, we can see that uh, it's counted up uh, the, the number of items in terms of their discrimination and their difficulty. And at the bottom of the screen, we have for each individual question, a measure of discrimination and a measure of difficulty. Um, and we can order our questions um, by clicking on the, the tab at the title. Um, so we can see which questions are, are, are in a way the best on our test. Um, the best thing to aim for uh, are questions with uh, fair or good discrimination um, and medium difficulty. These are ones that, that helpfully uh, split the students up um, into different grades relative to the, the difficulty of questions on the test.